I had my radon checked when I bought my house and it measured 5.7 picocuries per liter in the finished basement. Over the past year, I've had an AirThings radon monitor in the main living level of my house and the long-term average settled out to about 4.4. The EPA recommends homes be fixed if they are above 4. To me, 4.4 is marginal and probably fine, but I decided to fix it anyway. Plus, sometimes I've seen the one-day average number get pretty high, like around 15. So I got a couple quotes for a system to be installed, and they're around $2,000 in December 2023. With a professional installation, they usually core into your concrete floor, come up and core through your foundation, put the fan outside, and then run the vent pipe up the side of your house. I don't like the way this looks, and I don't like paying people to do something that I can do, so I decided to do the mitigation myself and route it inside my home. I decided to draw off my sump pit instead of coring into the slab. My sump pit is fed by a French drain which runs a quarter of the way around the house, basically symmetric around the corner furthest below grade. This is where the finished basement is. The other side of the house is at grade and is the garage. I figured venting from the sump pit would take advantage of the porous French drain and allow for radon to be drawn from a bigger area versus coring somewhere else. With that as my starting point, I had two routing options that avoided load-bearing walls and general stuff I wanted to stay away from. I could run it up in the corner of the bathroom linen closet where it would be pretty well hidden but still be exposed. The main challenge with this option was how far away from the sump pit it was. I would have had to run almost three times the horizontal piping to get to this spot. The other option was to run inside the wall between the dining room and living room. This is what I did and I think the way I did it is fairly clever so I wanted to share it. Based on the research I did, most radon systems use 3 inch or 4 inch pipe. The challenge of running through an interior wall is that walls are framed from 2x4 lumber, which means the inside cavity of your wall is 3.5 inches wide, usually a hair less. The outside diameter of 3 inch PVC is 3.5 inches, so you can't run 3 inch PVC through a 2x4 wall without being perfectly centered and probably shaving down the inside of the sheetrock. Um, this isn't realistic. However, the outside of 2 inch PVC pipe is 2 and 3 eighths inches, so this can run through a wall, but it creates more restriction and reduces the performance of the radon fan. And it would also increase the speed of the air to some extent, which would make more noise. Um, so what, what's important is the cross-sectional area of the pipe. The area of a circle equals pi r squared, so a 3 inch PVC pipe has an ID of 3 inches, so r is 1.5. Pi times 1.5 squared is about 7 inches squared. A 2 inch PVC pipe has an ID of 2 inches, so R is 1. Pi times 1 squared is about 3.14 inches squared. So now you can see that the cross section of a 2 inch pipe is about 45% of a 3 inch pipe. But if I were to run two sections of 2 inch pipe through my wall, uh, the cross section would be 6.28 inches, which is about 90% of the cross section of a single run of 3 inch PVC, and I can live with this. So to go from 3 inch PVC to two runs of 2 inch PVC, I'm using a Y fitting for 3 inch pipe on either end with a 2 inch offshoot. I used a 2 inch 45 degree street elbow here to make it parallel to the main line, and in the end of the Y I used a 3 inch to 2 inch reducing bushing. Uh, this will split my 3 inch line cleanly into the 2 inch lines that go through the wall. Once I'm through the wall, I will do the same thing to bring it back to a single 3 inch line, where I'll then install the fan. Besides that, I'm using various PVC elbows, pipe, and flex couplings to complete the routing. The flex couplings should make installation a little easier, allow me to angle the horizontal pieces for drainage of condensation, and make it easier to remove the sumpit cover for service as needed. The next tricky part is drilling into the wall. I know there is an outlet in the wall, and this Romex is coming down from that outlet. I also see this row of nails uh, in line with the hole for the Romex. Together, this is a pretty good indicator of the center of the wall. Um, I guess where the stud is based on the outlet and assume 16 inch centers. This means the edge of the next stud should be 14 and a half inches over. I drill quarter inch holes and use a bent piece of coat hanger to find the edge of the stud. My first hole I actually missed on the other side of the stud and then the second hole went into the stud and I drilled two more holes that were on the correct side with the last one being perfectly against the stud. And then from here I used a one and a half inch hole saw so I could get a better look and confirm that I was in the center of the wall. Once I had this, I was ready to drill the two and a half inch hole for the first piece of PVC. However, my one and a half inch inspection hole 
was where the center bit of the hole saw needed to go. And without the center bit being in wood, the hole saw is just gonna jump around. So to handle this, I drilled a two and a half inch hole in a piece of scrap and screwed it into the floor as a guide. And this worked pretty well. Now the next challenge is that I have eight feet from the concrete to the bottom of the floor. Uh, I cut the pipes to 113 inches, which is the minimum I felt safe cutting them to make the full run in one shot. Since there isn't enough room to stand them up and slide them through the wall, they will have to go in at an angle. Uh, I did the trig to figure this out, but the short story is I cut out between my two holes with a jigsaw to create a slot and allow for installing these pipes. The first pipe should go in no problem. The second pipe doesn't fit per the math, but it was really close, so I figured it would probably flex enough to get through there. With this slot cut out, I could measure between the studs and came up with 12 and a half inches, which explains why I missed my first few prospecting holes by so much because the studs right here are not on 16 inch centers. But knowing this will help me drill through the top of the wall. I took this picture through the lower hole and then assuming the studs are plumb, I made a scale and estimated that 10 inches from the center of the Romex hole was a good place to start drilling uh, through from the top. I had to go buy a longer quarter inch bit because there were three two by fours on top. Um, but it turns out my 10 inch estimate put me in a pretty good spot. However, the Romex hole was not drilled square and so it was not exiting in the center of the wall. But I could look up from the basement to see where my holes were coming through, which took a lot of the guesswork out of it. Once I got my spots, I drilled through with the hole saw. I hit some nails, which I either cut through or pulled out, and in the end, the holes were good enough. Another quick trick here is I ran some screws into the floor joist and put a scrap board up there. This way I could push the pipes through the wall and then pull over the board to create a temporary shelf to hold them there while I worked from above. To tap into the sump pit lid, I used a toilet flange flipped upside down. I drilled through the lid in a spot that made sense based on the rib pattern on the underside. Uh, due to the size of my hole saws, I wanted to drill from the top to be as clean as possible. So I drilled a center hole up from the bottom first and this worked out nicely. Then I drilled mounting holes for number 10 machine screws, which I used to bolt the flange down. I used some DAP 
230 to seal the flange to the lid and seal around where the wires for the sump pump and float switch went through. I didn't seal the perimeter of the lid uh, with caulk, I just used the rubber gasket that was already there. Next, I just had to connect the flange on the sump cover to the pipes in the wall. Uh, one thing I did was dry fit the angles and mark them with a Sharpie. Then I glued them out of position where it's easier to work and match the marks up to get the correct angle. Uh, make sure the marks are long because the PVC primer has acetone in it and it will remove the marker. I wired the fan up with a cord I had around that I previously cut off some old appliance. It's a three prong, but the fan doesn't have a ground, so I just wired black to black, white to white, and left the ground alone. The outlet in the wall is fed from the attic. This gives me a cable I can splice into for an outlet in the attic to plug the fan into. I tried to do this stupidly the first time and I'm gonna skip over that just for the sake of time, but the smarter way and what I ended up doing was cutting the Romex and running one piece up to the new outlet and then from the new outlet I ran a new section of Romex to meet the other half of the existing wiring and then wire nutted them together in a four inch box and that was done. I ran the pipe towards the back of the house after it exited the fan because I wanted the roof protrusion to be rear of the ridge line so it wouldn't be noticeable. I dropped the plumb bob to find center and moved my mark up a little to account for the angle I put in the horizontal run for accommodating drainage. I drilled through with a four and a quarter inch hole saw. Uh, you have to drill perpendicular to the roof. If you try to drill straight up vertically, the saw will jump, um, but the flashing is big enough to cover the oversized hole. Speaking of the flashing, what I bought can fit multiple size vent pipes. The way it's marked indicates you should be able to pull away the sections you don't need to size uh, the boot for your pipe. I didn't have good luck with this. I ended up getting it started with a small slit with a utility knife and then I was able to peel the rest away. It wasn't super easy so I'm glad I did it in advance on the bench instead of trying to do it on the roof. Now up on the roof, I found the center drill bit hole and cut away the shingles to expose the bigger hole. From here, it's a lot of trimming and measuring to get the shingles to follow the contour of the flashing. Uh, take your time and go slow. I had to pull a few nails out to slide the flashing up where it needed to be. Um, a helper here in the attic would be nice so you don't have to keep going back and forth. But basically, keep going until the pipe is centered in the hole and above the elbow. I used some blue painter's tape to mark the spot once I got it right. I put some roofing sealant on the top and sides of the flashing, but not the bottom, and then slid it back into place and pushed it down. 
I nailed the sides and put nails back in the shingle strips where I'd removed them and then dabbed some sealant on the nail heads near the sides and that was done. I didn't glue on the last 90 or the critter guard I put on there. I don't think it needed it. Um, I glued the vertical pipe into the elbow in the attic and the plumbing was done. The pressure gauge is easy to install. Uh, you can see my system is reading 0.5 on the water column gauge. The max for this fan is 1.7 inches. And based on what I found online, 0.5 inches is generally a minimum. So I'm satisfied with that. I think this is more of a result of the big volume provided by pulling from the sump pit French drain area and not a result of the two runs of two inch pipe. Looking at the CFM chart, this means I'm pulling 124 CFM. With this in mind, looking at the drainage chart for three inch pipe, I should have put one and a half inches of rise per foot of run and I did a half inch, but I'm not going to change anything. I think it's going to be fine. So my total cost for this project was about $550. That includes the fan and all the parts and pieces to plumb it in. That's a quarter of the price of a professional installation, and I think this looks way better. It also seems to be working. It's been a few months, and I haven't seen a daily level over 4. The lowest I've seen was 0 0.38, but it's usually 1 point something. And I didn't reset the long-term average after starting the system, and it's already down to below 2.3 and is still dropping. So I bet it ends up settling below 2 which would be more than a two times reduction in the radon levels, which is plenty for me. Overall, I'm real happy with the result and I'm glad I spent the time to do it this way.